What up, peeps? We are back with more Madden 22 game day updates. EA Sports hit us off with some more gridiron notes, the Madden NFL 22 gameplay deep dive, where they cover some major improvements in passing, movement, coverage, tackling, playbook. They even go a little bit deeper into the dynamic gameplay and the game day momentum. And if you guys haven't checked it out, please check out Operation Sports. We got a great video, a complete list of Madden 22's M factors and home field advantages. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That's going to help you stay up to date with everything Madden, ESBC, all sports gaming. So let's go ahead and dive deep into these core gameplay enhancements. First of all, the Madden team has noted that based off of our feedback, we've made a variety of core innovations to these areas, blocking, tackling, catching, player movement, and much, much more. Let's go ahead and get started with player movement. I quote, to continue our journey with next-gen stats driving our player movement to more authentic levels, we've continued relying on this data to add even more movement, nuance, and athleticism to this year's game. One of our biggest areas of emphasis in Madden NFL 21 was route data, and we've added a bunch of new play-specific routes to Madden NFL 22. In addition to more routes, receivers will be using the signature cuts and releases off the line to gain space against the press and deliver more control when turning up the field after a catch or near the sideline for both user-controlled and AI-controlled receivers. For more explosive player movement, you'll see ball carriers and defenders alike showing maximum effort in their posture when sprinting and using the new animation that explode faster through starts and cuts, which was a critical piece of feedback we've received from the Madden NFL community last season. You'll feel smooth and explosive controls for QBs, both inside and outside the pocket and everything in between. And we've added more animation content for better transitions. And overall, player movement has definitely improved. Uh, players are moving and accelerating much better this season. And I think a key thing is explosiveness. You'll see this in your prime time receivers, uh, the way they're getting off the line of scrimmage, the acceleration, it's, they definitely kick that up a notch. It looks nice. So I think we can expect things to be a lot less sluggish as they were in 21 in some instances, but definitely kicked up a notch. And just to sum up the last paragraph, it looks like this year we'll have a few more tools in the arsenal with the return of control moves, special moves like juke, spin, and dead leg will have variants based on if the move is performed. And they give an example why holding down RT, R2, acceleration burst versus letting go of the acceleration button. It sounds like this will give you more options as the ball carrier, as they stated, to get creative in navigating traffic, have more control and hitting run lanes and more variety when faking out defenders. That would be definitely anything to improve that running game, especially running in between tackles that I'm all for that. And this takes us into tackling. I quote, tackling got a significant upgrade across the board. These upgrades include a complete refresh of the most used tackles from years past with a focus on new interactions that are more appropriate to specific situations and aim to pay off the size and strength of the players in the tackle to better respect physics and user control. And some of the new tackle content and situations that will be in Madden 22 are touch player down tackles, where the defender will show the awareness of the ball carrier giving himself up or falling down without being ruled down by touching the player on the ground or shoving back to the ground as he gets up to get a play blown dead. Sideline tackles will show defenders using the sideline to their advantage by triggering specific tackling content or interactions near the boundaries. Early hurdle tackles will intelligently fill animation gaps in tackling right when the ball carrier starts a hurdle and ensure that the tackle interaction that takes place looks and feels appropriate to the specific situation. This goes into game tackles. Concurrent game tackles deliver more organic animations that can dynamically include anywhere from two to four players, all joining into these tackles at different times. 
New and improved broken tackles will have a bigger impact on the game as we now have quick broken tackles that leave the ball carrier in control during the interaction and a more robust system for broken dives, tackles that will occur more frequently based on player matchups. New tackling momentum logic will better detect size, speed, and traits of the players involved in the matchup so that base tackling physics of both the entry and outcome will match more appropriately. You'll see bigger backs falling forward more in tackles, while smaller, more agile backs will get thrown backwards. AI-controlled players are also aware of these matchups, so you'll see smaller AI defenders taking the legs out from underneath bigger ball carriers and big bruising ball carriers seeking out contact by looking for more trucks and stiff arms and all brought to life with a new momentum specific tackling animation. Oh snap, these tackles, this whole tackling system sounds great. I, I love everything that they've listed in here, especially the, the new tackling momentum logic. Bigger back seeking out contact. Given the size difference, you're going to have different outcomes. So this is good information and basically just like they stated, uh, the tackling has been refreshed. It would be dope if they could add a lot more tackling animations. That's something I've been wanting to see them uh, add for a long time. So we'll see what the future brings. Alright, let's talk about catching. I quote, for catching controls, Madden NFL players desired more control and more organic outcomes in the passing game. To fulfill that desire, we've made a lot of changes to significantly decrease the frequency of multiplayer catches. There will be no more run after catch multiplayer catches, no more contextually questionable short yardage multiplayer catches, and less slowdowns by receivers with a step or two of separation. What you will see are more single player catching scenarios where both players are independently playing the ball or seamlessly playing the receiver with catch tackles, catch knockouts, and mid-air collisions. Specific to mid-airs, we added some functionality so that the intended outcome of the interaction will be respected on any tackle that takes place during the catch so you don't have to rely on a specific animation to play to get the correct play outcome. We've also improved sideline catching by adding logic for more accurate foot detection and added brand new sideline catch animations for more variety in both core Madden NFL and the yard. So now when catching near the boundaries, those toe drag catches will be more accurate and efficient. Lastly, we've done some tuning to improve the catch height threshold so that big receivers will have a large catch radius and defenders attempting to swat the ball will have a larger range to reach the ball to knock it away. So I've been hearing some good things one thing that I'm hearing is that there's less two-man interactions. This still happens, but not as often, which is good. And this is all between the DB and the receiver. I mean, they're actually playing the ball independently instead of just getting tied up in like an animation where you feel like you just have no control. Also, due to this independent animation, uh, both players playing the ball, this catch height, those superstar receivers, um, they're going to have an advantage. The catch height radius... These big time receivers are gonna be going ham. Let's get into the blocking, I quote, as much as we've discussed all the cool things happening with the skill players, we know how much you like the trenches too. We've made enhancements to both pass and run blocking to improve animation quality and control in these interactions. Just like with tackling, we are using our new momentum logic in blocking, and you'll first notice this in the pocket. To respect the physics of pass rushers as they fire off into the line, you'll see all new animation content when blockers engage defenders, when they are battling towards the QB, and when they are ultimately attempting to shed the block to get past the blocker. This result is a more organic and dynamic formation of the pocket that you'll have to be aware of as as the QB. The pass rush will be flying from all angles and gamers will need good pocket presence to step up into the pocket from time to time. Momentum will have an impact in run block as well, where we've added new blocking animations that better respect the speed and movement direction of the defender at the time of engagement, so that moments where you feel suction or loss of control as a defender 
are reduced and even added more content where defenders are getting penetration into the backfield as part of the engagement to better balance the run game. Lastly, on the offense, blockers will give more clear running lanes for the ball carrier to cut through as we've added new blocking content for blocks moving more laterally and backwards and are now able to start blocking interactions from a wider variety of angles, which reduces the number of head-up interactions on each play. There are a few other details we've added to the blocking that hopefully you'll notice beyond momentum and physics. We've done work on screenplay so that the lineman pulling will appropriately chip the pass rusher before releasing and made some improvements to their speed, facing angle, and targeting logic while in open field. We've also added in a new block animation and tuning so that mismatches will be better reflected especially when using smaller defenders inside the box to defend running plays. Lastly, AI-controlled pass rushers will now have access to non-engaged speed rush moves on the edge to bring them to parity with user-controlled rushers from Madden NFL 21. These moves definitely bring more pressure to the pocket and they use matchup formula of pass block finesse versus finesse move to both determine the defender's likelihood of attempting a speed rush as well as his chance to be successful. So my thoughts overall around blocking, it sounds like the pocket itself does form better this year, but you're still getting a lot of breakdowns, a lot of block shedding. You being the QB having that awareness, yeah, we could step up in the pocket, but that pocket breaks down very fast. And this is probably an area that's hard for them to balance. I mean, you can't have perfect blocking on every play, but they need to find a, a strong balance with it. And I'm hearing that the, the shedding is just crazy this year so far. I mean, it does get disappointing. I mean, especially when you have those double team blocks and, and the defender is getting through that double team. I mean, that continues to be a problem. But let's see how these overall improvements are implemented. Now, the block and momentum with blockers versus smaller defenders, I love this idea. Especially if you're playing head-to-head, -head, a lot of people would like to use speed against you, but those smaller defenders, they may have a lot of speed, but this block and momentum is going to get those players pancaked or pushed back. Kind of balance out that cheese your opponent's trying to trying to game plan against you. So I, I, I like that idea, especially online. <laughs> so yeah. All right, let's get on to the list of core improvements. Increase ranges for pass, lead, and pass trajectory. Decrease the effectiveness of the over-the-top coverage adjustment when guarding routes with cuts. Increase get off speed of blitzing defenders so they are faster to their gaps. New impact blocks that respect player momentum with an emphasis on bigger offensive linemen dominating smaller defensive backs inside the tackle box. Added multiplayer scramble sack interactions. Reduce match distance on blocks from the rear and back shoulder. Retuned high throw mechanic to make it more effective. Major tuning to multiplayer catching to reduce the frequency, but also reduce warping when they are used. Improved pursuit logic to decrease the frequency of over and under pursuit tackles. Improved defender reaction time when in position to play the ball versus pass. After the whistle, teammates will now help the ball carrier up off the ground when in position to do so. So I'm hearing some good things as far as the get off speed for the blitzing defenders that that's slightly improved, but there's still some improvement needed in areas like, like pass leading and passing pursuit. Those are two areas that I think could use some improvement, but it seems like they're on the right track tuning these areas and hopefully we can just continue to see them grow in the future. On to the playbooks. I quote, all 32 NFL team playbooks have been updated to reflect their real world plays up through the end of the last season with a heavy emphasis on ensuring teams with new head coaches and or offensive coordinators match that new personnel. For both offense and defense, we focused on making sure play call percentages and tendencies are as accurate as possible to ensure they closely match the play calling of their real world counterparts when controlled by the AI. 
Some defensive examples, based on stats from last season, the Miami Dolphins will be more aggressive in blitzing, whereas the Seattle Seahawks are a team that relies heavily on playing cover three. Some offensive examples, the Baltimore Ravens ran pistol formations more than any other team, while also being very run heavy, which will be reflected in Madden NFL 22. The Kansas City Chiefs will primarily focus on using shotgun formations and mixing in RPOs and a vertical passing game utilizing their team speed. We've added formations and nearly 300 new plays, many of which are new concepts added to the game. So 300 is actually a pretty good number. If they add more through just any live updates, that would be awesome too. But below you can see these formations and for example, you know, gun empty squads, gun normal Y off, gun normal Y off close, single back deuce, Y flex, so it's good that they've added more options. The more formations, the better. The better we can game plan against our opponent. So let's get into the pass coverage. I quote for Madden NFL 22, our focus is to improve the way pass coverage reacts and carries out assignments versus the most effective and most frequently called pass plays. Our decision making was driven by data that showed us which pass plays are called the most by players and which have the highest yards per completion rate. We tested each of our defensive coverage concepts against those plays to identify issues defending them in Madden NFL 21 and got to work to improve defending them. So the top five pass plays they identified was this gun tray Y flex dagger, gun empty base flex verticals, gun tray Y flex PA crossers, single back wing pair, tight end attack, gun bunch mesh spot. Overall collecting this data and trying to tune the pass coverage to defend against plays is very positive. As we know, I mean, there's a lot of cheese that can be thrown around in a lot of different games. Madden is no exception. People like to run the same play over and over. And a lot of plays are just hard to defend. So identifying those top plays that, that are difficult, uh, it looks like they're going in and tuning these. Uh, not only just doing some fine tuning, the animations, this is really good stuff. And I mean, the complete breakdown of areas that they're focusing on improvements in pass coverage. So backpedal, turn and run transition, animation improvements. Besides all the coverage logic, there are some variety of new animations we've added to Madden 22. Red zone awareness, we've improved the logic for defenders inside the red zone and end zone. Rally into the flats, a significant update was made to the way our curl flat and cloud flat defenders are able to play crossing and dragging routes as they come across the field. Vertical crossing routes, and they acknowledged, you know, a key component of the top five pass plays is they all contain some form of vertical crossing route. And they also went to say that the work done with back pedal transitions and leverage will put our defenders in better position to play these routes. And that's it, peeps. This is all the information from the Gridiron Notes, the Madden NFL 22 Game Day Deep Dive. Definitely an overall refresh of things like the tackling, the route running, the blocking. I mean, Madden already has a core value, a core system in place. They're trying to take that a step forward as they continue to try to make strides on improving the franchise mode as well. So let us know what you think in the comments. Be sure to like, share, subscribe to the page. We will be back with more gaming news, more Madden, ESBC, anything sports gaming. And that's it, peeps. Until next time, Gio.